Greetings, this is Jesse from Nintendo Dads. So, playing for the Let's Play of Game Builder Garage. I've been wanting to do this earlier today, but things happened. I didn't have a chance to do it. So, it's, you know, 10 o'clock at night my time. Finally get a chance to play this. Uh, I've already had people ask me, hey, did you get to the Picross puzzle yet? I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means, but uh, other than I saw it in the demo, or saw it in the montage reel, but uh, we'll see what, uh, well, I don't know how long, long it takes to get that far, but let's uh, launch this and see where we're at. Oh, well, that's definitely loud. I'm going to need to lower that. And I am using a mouse. So I don't need the controller. Let me put that down. Main menu is interactive lessons or free programming, which looks like I can't choose yet. So let's do interactive lessons. Oh, I need a controller for this. Grab the apple. Now all the move B to jump. Well, but jump isn't jumping. Hey, it looks like you need some help. What is that weird look? Oh yeah, talking dot. Kind of strange. Got it. I should introduce myself. You can call me Bob. Glad that's out of the way. Let me just say, I understand your frustration. You can't finish the simple game, right? You can't jump by pressing B, so you can't reach the apple. But well, there's a good reason for all that. You see, the thing is, this game is still under construction. The way it is now, you'll never beat the game, no matter how many times you try to jump. In situations like this, I like to say, don't get mad, get programming, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to do a deep dive into this. <laughs> Game to wrap, to wrap things up. We need to, to peek behind the curtain, so to speak. Well, now I've got two mice to worry about. Hey, new, new friend draw. I, I literally grabbed the switch mouse string to move the mouse on my PC. That doesn't surprisingly doesn't work. So, uh, why don't we do that right now? Can you press this? Oh, if it isn't our Bob. Good to see you, dear. Hey, Bob. Woohoo! Hi, Bob Boing. Welcome to the inside of the game, Laffer. So, you want to know about our friends here? These beings are called Nodon. There are all kinds of different Nodon living inside your Nintendo Switch console. If you call up Nodon on this here program screen, then connect them together. And pow, you're actually altering the game's programming. This place where we use Nodon to do programming has a nifty little name. It's called the Game Builder Garage. That little fragment of a game you played earlier was programmed in the Game Builder Garage. But let's get down to business. We'll use the Game Builder Garage to finish the game. Um, what's the, the blank look? You're going to use programming to finish building this game. It's not as daunting as it might sound. All we need to do is make it so B lets you jump. See the output port on this button note on? Just connect it to the port jump on the person note on. Hi, I'm Button Nodon. I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to push this button like POW! I'm kind of a genius about stuff like this. Hi there, I'm a person Nodon. Nice to meet you. You saw the little character on the game screen, right? I put that character there. I help it move around. Okay, hold on the mouse button and move the cursor following my movements and make the connection. If pressed, jump. And presto, we made it so pressing B makes the character jump. Now we should be able to complete the game. Why don't we head back and give it a try? Very floaty. You did it, great job. You had to finish building a game with a bit of programming. Well then, why don't we pop back to the program screen? 
So what do you think? Yeah, it's fun learning how to program a game, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how robust it is. It sounds like it can be pretty robust if, you know, albeit clunky. Though, you know, I'm normally not that good at object-oriented programming. So, and I really don't have a lot of imagination on game, game creation. So, I don't know how far I'll get into this, but at least I, I want to get through the tutorials and what the game wants to teach, and then I'll see if I get ideas from that. Do you want to program some more games? If you do, then maybe you'd be interested in your new pal Bob's interactive lessons. Just like now, you go through programming all kinds of games with me as your guide. And by the end, you'll have what you need to make your own game all by yourself. So how about it? You feel like taking some of Bob's patented interactive lessons? Sure. Perfect. In that case, I've got an awesome bunch of games for you. Let's take a look. We'll be making seven games in these interactive lessons. In the first lesson, we'll make Tag Showdown, which is just a simple tag game of tag. Next, we'll use some unique features of the Nintendo Switch console on a roll. Lesson three is the auto-scrolling blaster game Alien Blaster. In the game for the fourth lesson, we'll run, jump, and punch our way to the goal in Risky Run. The fifth lesson is a game called Mystery Room. We'll be solving three-dimensional puzzles. In the sixth lesson, we'll make a computer-controlled car to race against in the White Knuckle Thrill Racer. Last but not least, in lesson seven, we'll make the 3D action game Super Person World. By learning to, pro to program games like the ones I just mentioned, you'll learn the skills to make your very own games. Okay then, I'll be waiting for you in the first lesson. Be sure to pay a visit. I've been the ever knowledgeable Bob. See you later. Tag takes about 30 minutes. Okay, thanks for the warning. Hey, hang on a sec. My name's Alice. So, not Bob. He's the excitable one you already met. I look similar, but I'm Alice. How do you do? Please don't forget or call me Bob or anything like that. So, you know how you got that game to work just now? Be honest, you don't really get what it made me to work, right? I mean, that's totally fine. You've just started with all this. But you know, if you're going to make your own game, you need to understand which mechanisms do what. That's why I set up some checkpoints to help you. I'd like you to come to the checkpoint before lesson one. I'll be waiting. Checkpoint. Make the person jump. Thanks for stopping by. Just in, just in case you forgot, I'm Alice. And this here is the checkpoint. The idea here is to test whether you really know your programming stuff and how do we test it? With a puzzle. Maybe this is a bit sudden, throwing a puzzle at you, expecting you to solve it, but let's see how it goes. <coughs> the basics. I have something for you that I think it'll help. Your very own Alice's Guide. This will give you the further tips on how to use Nodon to make games. Can you select this here? It'll open up Alice's Guide list. Why not use it to learn the basics of Game Builder Garage? Okay, lend me your ears, and I'll give you the basics of Game Builder Garage. The screen you're looking at is now is called the game screen. As the name suggests, this is where the game you've programmed will play out. Here we have the person object. Try pressing B. The person jumped. But what made the person jump exactly? Let's, let me take you through it in the, in the Game Builder Garage basics. Let's take a peek at, on the around the back and see the other side of this game, the program screen. Hey peeps, oh it's that programmer again. Hey, I remember you. Looking forward to bashing some buttons with you. So here we are at the program screen. This is where we'll program our game with the help of host node on. 
That's right, when it comes to programming, we're here to help. Your Snowdown has its own special function with a setup. Watching out for a button when it gets pressed. We button no down have that covered. And as for us person no down, I'm the one that puts the person out there on the game screen. That's right, the person that you saw back there was the person no down's doing. It's nice to know when people acknowledge my work. Take note of the position of the person no down on the program screen here. The location of the person no down determines the location of the person on the game screen. For example, if you were to move me over to the right of the program screen, the person will appear over on the right side of the game screen. Let's try it out. Grab it and drag it over. Oh, I've moved. How do you think that looks on the game screen? There you go, the person has moved over to the right. So take note, the, pers the program screen is the place where we position things that appear on the game screen, like objects or characters. Okay, head back to the program screen. Another thing to know about the program screen is that you can scroll it to find more space. I disabled the scrolling before though, so I thought it might have been made things confusing. Now that scrolling is enabled, try dragging the mouse in all four directions while holding the button down. There, now you know how to get around the program screen. Now try scrolling the mouse wheel, or try plus and minus towards the bottom of the program screen. Zoom. Oh, that's got some zoom in it. That's another way to zoom in or out. I thought it might get confusing if the screen was moving around here in my guide, so I disabled it. But I think this feature really came in handy when you're building your own games. Let's put the screen back to where how it was before. All done. Back to the main topic, I wanted to, to tell you about how to make this person jump. If you remember, pressing B made the person jump when we were on the game screen. That's what was my doing. I'm connected to the button node on, see? These lines here represent the connections. I linked them up in a while back, right? I'm watching out for anyone pressing B, I've got you covered. Anyone pressing B and I immediately send the signal to the person node on via the connection. Thanks for handling that. To understand the signal, try thinking of it as a very simple message that passes along a wire. Now to pay attention to exactly which part of me is connected to the button node on, you see where it says jump. When I get a signal at my jump port, that's my cue to make the person jump in the game screen. Simple, right? Because we work together, the person jumps when you press B. Allow me to sum it up. Button node on's job is to keep watching for B button being pressed. When B is pressed, the button node on sends a signal from its output port. When it arrives at the person at the person node on's jump port, the person node on makes the person jump. I know, gems. Thanks for watching. It's easy when you know how. Remove the connection between the node on and see what happens. Now let's go to the game screen and see what changed. And pressing B does nothing. Because we erased the connection between the node on, pressing B no longer causes the person to jump. Yeah, no connection, no jumping. That's how it works. That's right, if there's no connection, then the signal won't reach them. So that's why when the, per the person didn't jump when you push B. Let's reconnect. Connecting Nodon, no, see, connecting Nodon together is one of the most important parts of Game Builder Garage. In fact, I'd say it's the most fundamental aspect of working with Nodon, so remember that. Jump. Over on the other side, the Nodon are toiling away to make the program work. Once you understand how things work in the background, you really start looking at them differently, huh? That's what makes programming fun. You remember us, don't you? You'll be seeing a lot of us while you're building your games. I can hardly contain myself. I'm looking forward to it. If you get the hang of Game Builder Basics, then you can press B to close the guide. Now I'm going to test your knowledge with the puzzle challenge. 
make the person jump. Here's where I'll be putting you through the paces with, with some puzzles to make sure you've got the grasp on the basics of the game built in the garage. To clear the puzzle, you need to make sure the person collect the apple. How are you going to get it, I wonder? As things are, there's nothing you can do to make the person move. You'll need to make a change if you want to get the apple. In fact, you'll need to do some programming all by yourself. Keep in mind, you can't edit whatever you feel like in these puzzles. The only way you're permitted to solve this particular problem is by connecting button note on and person note on. All clear. Looks like you definitely have the basics of the Game Builder Garage down. From now on, I'll be testing how well you know Game Builder Garage and Lenota. So between each lesson, I'll test you with some checkpoints. I'll also be adding things to my guide every now and then. That's Alice's guide to you. So if there's anything that's not clear, feel free to hit up Alice's guide. Now there's nothing holding you back, so let's get to lesson one. Okay, so about 40 minutes, about 50 minutes, about an hour, okay, each of these gets a little bit longer until the end. So I guess that, I think there's about six hours of content. Adding player controls. So glad you made it. Welcome to the interactive lessons. In case you forgot, I'm Bob. And I can't wait to start working with you. Well, it's a day to remember because you're going to make your very first game. Tag Showdown. In this game, a tagger will chase after a runner while dodging a torrent of rolling balls. Sounds fun already, right? And this thrilling game will be played out right here on the game screen. I'm interested in what the community will come up with, too. You know, a lot of these games that I'm seeing looks like games I can probably write on the Intellivision as well. <laughs> There's at least these simpler single screen games. Of course you can't play anything just yet, I mean you haven't even programmed the game. From now on the programming you do on the program screen will be reflected right here on the game screen. Without further ado, let's head over to the program screen and start programming our game. Welcome to the program screen. This is where you call, call up Nodon and program your game. First, let's get our player character up and running. For that, we'll need a, to call a person Nodon. Select objects. Characters. Person. Nice to see you. Now the programming starts. Yeah, great stuff. Time for me to step into the limelight. Okay, now what happened after we placed the person note on? Let's take a game at the, at the game screen and find out. And here's our person on our blank empty game screen. Putting the person note on on the program screen makes a person appear on the game screen clear enough, right? Next up we'll want to be able to control our player character using the controller. That, yeah, I think there's... I, I think there's user customizable stuff you can do as well. I, Try moving person with L. Does it do anything? Nope. Okay, because you can see the person isn't moving at all. This is where the programming comes in. Let's 
get our player character mo mobile. If we want to move the character with L stick, then we need to call on the stick node on. Go to input, stick movement, left stick, left right. Boing. Yep. <clears throat> I bet you can't wait to move that control stick around. We'll need to link up the output with the left to right. What I tried to do is, I kept it running past the screen for several seconds to see if it actually runs that far off screen, off camera, or if it just comes back right away. And it is running that far off camera. In fact, the further away it went, I stopped even hearing the footfalls. See, they went down. Now I'll bring it back. Bravo. Now with that covered, we can move on to something else. Wouldn't it be good if a person could jump when it's pressed? Move the stick mode on to the blue frame. Input, button press, B. Yo. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm, got some shadows going on. I don't think I noticed that before. Okay, guess what? You cleared step one. In this step, we made it possible to, to move the person with the controller. In the next step, we'll get ready to build a level for our game of tag. I don't mind saying I'm pretty excited about that. See you in the next step. Welcome again. Let's get right back into building our game of tag. But first, let's have a look at back at what we've already done. Alright, this is a little redundant. Yeah, I just did this. So... This time around, we'll be building the floor and walls to set the stage. making the floor and walls, but first we need to decide where we're going to put the entire level. How about the space up here? Would that do? I'm glad that's settled. Now we need to make sure the area is shown in the game screen. But if we're going to do that, we'll need the help of game screen note on. It's a camera. Cute. Everyone's saying you're the next big thing. With you at the helm, this is going to be simply stunning production. We're sure going to rise to the very top. If we make use of the game screen note, uh, we can determine which part of the program screen will be reflected in the game screen. I couldn't have put it better myself. Whatever I frame will appear vividly and thrillingly on the game screen. Let's make this game screen note on a little bigger. Drag this icon until it fits the blue. F okay, so it keeps an aspect ratio and just it sh grows both sides. 
take a look and see what's happening over at the game screen. I think you'll notice that our player character is nowhere to be seen. There he is. You see <laughs> Let's move the person no dial. Wonderful, now the person is in the limelight. The camera loves you, darling. Be sure to get my good side. <laughs> Look, now we see the person reflected in the game screen. Yikes, but not for long. But anyhow, now that we know that whatever is surrounded by the game screen not on on the program screen will be reflected in the game screen, just like you saw. But we're not in great shape if our player character can't stay on the screen. The obvious solution is a floor. We'll of course need an object not on to make the floor. Yeah, no, probably not. Heyo, the name's Object Nota. True to the name Object Nodon or Nodon that makes objects appear on the game screen. Well, he's not wrong. Drag the Object Nodon underneath the person. Onto the game screen. Ah! <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, sorry, I should mention with the... With nothing to keep them up, objects just drop right out of the screen. Okay, that was that was that was funny. First select the object note on. Open the, the settings. The settings screen is where you can make all kinds of changes to a note on. We'll need to adjust the properties settings to fix it so objects doesn't fall anymore. Now disable movable, destructible indestructive. That's time we can close. Perfect, the object is staying where it should. The person isn't falling out of the screen either. Though I'm not sure that floor is big enough, but the first person feels a bit uneasy here. And of course, it still falls off. I'm, I'm, I'm underneath the floor now. The player won't fall off quite so easy now. And the floor is doing the floor thing, but the color is kind of playing. Let's see if we can change the color. Here's where we'll be able to select a color for your object. Let's try brown. Ooh, excuse me, now the floor is brown, awesome. Well, the floor is taken no care of, but the player goes past the edge, it falls off again. Perhaps some walls will make it a little safer. Just like with the floor, we'll need to make use of object node on to create walls. Calling up more object node on, changing the settings again. Sounds like hard work, right? So let's save ourselves some work and just copy the floors to make walls. Select the object, copy. That could be a wall, no problem. And we copy to the node. Now we change height and width. Okay, so it's just, it's set this, it's keeping the center center, but I'm able to adjust. Okay, I get it now. Now make a copy, drag it to the right. Ta-da, the walls are complete. Be 
hold some nice safe brown walls. No need to worry about our player falling into the abyss now. Yeah, I can't wait to see what I build too. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> it, what I come up with it will probably be very simple. Step two complete. In this step, we added the floor and walls. In the next step, we'll add some platforms to complete the level. I just hope it doesn't recap step two. Alice's guide updated. And there you are. Last time, we made floors and walls. Okay, yep, we're doing this again. Does this place seem a little small for a game tag, maybe? You could fiddle around with the walls and floors to make them a bit bigger, or you can just make the person smaller. This will have the same effect as making the level bigger. Select the person out on and shrink it. That's how you make a person go on smaller. As you might have guessed, it's rank in size. And it has a lot more space to move around in. Looks like we're all set to continue building our level. Picross, yeah. <laughs> this is where we'll liven things up by placing a whole bunch of platforms. F0 garage. <laughs> Start by selecting copy it. And adjust the new node on so it's the same size as the blue frame. Drag it here. Hop on me all you want, I won't break. Oh! Interesting. Okay. I, I, I thought he could jump in the middle of a fall, but I, I just must have caught him in the last frame. He was on the platform. We're going to make a whole bunch more just like this one. I think you're ready to try to make a slope. Start by selecting. He's... I can't zoom in yet. They won't let me. Hmm. Lastly, rotate it so it's on an angle. Let's make an another one, but on the opposite side. Why well, wouldn't I just copy that one? But okay. Right here. A perfect fit. Now we have two sloping platforms. Next, let's add some slopes to the bottom corners. This is the first tutorial, yes. These wacky slope surfaces are going to give us a thrilling game and tag, don't you think? We need more platforms.
There is a demo? I don't think I knew that. Well, now that I think about it, I think it was mentioned last night. Maybe it was post-show, but... Well, I, I don't do object-oriented programming for my job. Um, it's more linear. But I have, have done some iOS programming, which does have a, a, a UI interface that drags points from an object into a function to do. So that, 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 that this isn't something that's just made up by, by Nintendo and Gamified. It's, it is a simple fuller version of it, but it's something that actually happens. And I wasn't going to say anything to, uh, but I wasn't going to pick on him. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't done iOS programming in over 10 years now. Now I've got a lot of places to jump around. He controls like crap. I wonder if we'll be able to play with his jumping physics at all. Because I don't like how the jumps work. Yeah, 512 is probably a little limited, but considering the fact that this is not meant f for you to create Dragon Quest 13 with it, it's meant for you to make what is equivalent to a micro game from WarioWare. I think 512 will be plenty. <laughs> well, I, I know, I, I don't know any Java that does GUI. I, everything I do is like background processing and back in server logic. So again, all this stuff with the GUI is relatively new to me. Go ahead and move around a bit with L and B. Just think of all the action-packed, pulse-pounding games of tag in store for you. The end and not gates. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Wait until you try to control two characters at once. Or if I probably won't, but you know someone else might, and we're not going to stop them. Step three is complete. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if it was going to be two people playing or if one was actually going to have some AI to it, but I bet AI is going to be, would probably be a bit difficult. Good to see you again. We're already halfway through the programming of our game of tag. We're zipping through. In this step, we're going to create a second person to act as a tagger. Then we'll have the real deal bona fide two player game. Last time we added some interesting touches to our level. Let's warm up by moving the player. I don't want to. I've done this every step so far. I don't need to do this again. Imagine what it'll be like when there's a tag tagger chasing the player. I get chills. I don't know what you said. Let's see, saw this game on another stream. Someone already made a first person shooter. Oh, is that the code? Took me all night to build that. Oh, but... Before we make a tagger, let's adjust the position of a person a bit. Move the person out to... to the right. Good idea to move over the other node on attached to the person node on. It'll make it easier to understand. I would want to select and move both at the same time, but I guess the game won't let me do that. Okay. Let's take a look at the game screen. As you can see, the player has moved from the middle to the right. Preparations are done. Let's head over to the program to create the tagger. Um, too soon to tell, since I'm only about 15 minutes, or about 
I guess 35 minutes into this. But you know, definitely if you if you want to learn programming, this is not a bad way to get to get a start. You know, this this is definitely not a game that everyone will want. <laughs> we can use another person. So okay, copy our person. Hello peeps. How can I help? You can count on me, I'm a railroad person, no doubt. Move it over to this left side. Let's see how it's looking. Now we have two characters. No, I think I, I, I'm half tempted on really seeing if I can reproduce this with, on, in an television. I think that would be funny. Left trigger, drag, highlight. Okay. I, try moving them. Oh, only one person. The person on the left isn't moving. I guess it's not that surprising. We still need to do the necessary programming to control the second person. Now we have two characters we need to figure out. Since it's a two-player game, we'll need to have two players controlling each person at the same time. Controlling one person with the left Joy-Con and the other person on the right would be ideal. Let's arrange it so the tagger on the left moves with the left stick and jumps with L. As for the runner on the right side, we'll control them with the right stick and R. Now that we've got a plan, we can program the controls to start with Tagger. First, we'll need to call on the stick note on. Boing. I was hoping, will it let me, you know, I, I want to play this game where both runners are being controlled by the left stick. I think that would be funny. Yeah, they should have taught multi cop, you know, selecting multiple nodes and dragging. I think that would have been a useful thing to teach. Let's program the node on so that our runner moves with R. Right stick. Now that it's done, you'll be able to control the runner with R instead of L. The degree that the control stick is tilting will be converted into an output based on the value of the Notons output range settings. Now configure this. Disable B and enable R. I'll be able to jump with R. Ready to check out the results. This is really hard to do with one controller. Jumping with R with a pro controller is also awkward. Right now the runner and the tagger look exactly the same. That could be a problem. Select the tagger. We'll change its color to red. Runner's color to light blue.
Now we can easily tell the tagger and the runner apart. Can we make it even better? It's a game of tag, so we should make it so something happens when the tagger catches the runner. Because there's no collision detection yet. Oh, nothing happens, but that's understandable. If we want to make something happen, we need to do some programming. Let's make it so the runner is destroyed when they collide with the tagger. First, select the tagger person's note on. Settings. Enable destructive. And now it's destructible. Now if the tagger comes into contact with the runner, the runner will be smashed into smithereens. That was so cool. We made it so that the tagger can destroy the runner. If the runner breaks, that means the tagger caught the runner. In other words, the tagger won. Our game of tag is now a true two-player game. Wahoo! If you've caught the runner and you want to play again, you can press the retry button for a do-over. This way you can start the game again from the beginning. Is that supposed to be... Is that a minus for that? Let me... My face is in the way. Let me check something. Let me go to my old profile. Yep. Oh, that's a plus two. Okay. I was, okay, I wasn't expecting that. I have not tried WarioWare DIY. And yeah, uh, Tommy Tallarico is the one running Amico. <laughs> If you've tested that out enough, let's head back over to the program screen. Everything seems to be ordered. Step 4 is clear. The key, he announced that he was the new president and CEO of Intellivision back in 2018. I think that's when they first announced Amico. That would have had originally had a release date of 2020. It does seem a bit one-sided at the moment, don't you think? The tagger is kind of has an advantage. So the next step, we'll be adding in a feature to even up the odds a bit. See you at the next step. Unleashing the balls. Good to see you. We're about to begin the second half of lesson one. I don't want to summarize. We've been through this already. I want to make... Jump! Oh, nice. Jumping's horrible. Boom! As you saw, we also made it so the runner breaks up when they collide with the tagger. That's enough for a game of tag. But it seems like the tagger is a bit too strong, doesn't it? Right now, there's no way for the tagger to lose. That's not really fair. How about if we make things more interesting by adding rolling balls to the level? And what if the balls can destroy both the runner and the tagger? Based, based on what I've seen, I don't think there's a way to make it destructible by to only the runner. It would have to be to the tagger as well. Our game of tag is about to reach a whole new level of excitement. Yeah, that, that, that was... Yeah, haven't seen that guy since Tech TV G4 days. Yeah, he's been around. We'll need a new type launch object node on. Launch 10 objects. Who's calling me? You need me to throw things? Is that what you want? You want me to help build your game? Is that it? Wait, you're the pro game programmer, aren't you? Why didn't you say so? Of course I'll help. He's full of hot air and objects.
Look, a shower of spheres, a, a blizzard of balls. That's exactly what the launch note on can do for you. But the balls might be a bit big, no? We can do something about that. Shrink it a little so the it fits in the blue frame. I think we have them tumbling around this level in an even more exciting way. Let's put an extra platform above our runner and tagger. We'll need one over on the left side, so let's handle that now. Tagger and Runner have a little shelter from the torrent above. I think the torrent is a bit too powerful right now. The balls aren't rolling right, are they? We can adjust the power over on the program screen. Okay, launch well, speed to four. Oh, in direction. Yeah, this game has, and I, I've I've thought that earlier too. That I would the pieces, the objects that I want to copy, are not the ones that it has me copy. That's much better. We've tamed the torrent now, but see how each ball breaks when it hits the next one. Looks like we need to make the interval between each ball a bit longer. Time for more programming. Seven seconds. Since we extended the launch interval, we have to wait a longer for the first launch. Just a sec. There we go. With that fixed, we got the balls rolling the way we want them to. What you're thinking, we need some balls rolling on the other side now, am I right? So I... I am using a mouse, yes. Copy. Yeah, so that's what I figured it was going to have me do. And then we'll fire them off to the left side. <coughs> Give me. Wait for it. Wait for it. So I think if you're doing it, this game in handheld, you have to use touch controls. There, there is no controller controls to move pointers like there is in like Mario Maker. Now the shower of spheres comes from both left and right. So now our rolling balls are complete and we have them breaking on impact just like they should. But there's something we need to fix. Try moving the tagger and see what happens when they come in contact with the ball. Like as you see our tagger isn't damaged when the ball hits. Let's fix it so the tagger breaks when the ball hits, gets hit. Programming time. Yes, the light is at a big disadvantage. You probably need to use something like this as a, uh, in order to do what you need to do. So we need to make the tagger destructible.
Now the tagger breaks when the ball hits. Great. Imagine the tagger pursuing the runner through the hail of tumbling balls and the drama of the peril. We've got the makings of a truly thrilling contest. When you're done checking it out, return to the programming screen. And let's see. So five is clear. I would definitely recommend a mouse. Well, you know what? If you're playing on, if you're playing docked, you have to use a mouse. I don't think there's any other way to do it. The only other option is handheld. But yeah, mice are cheap. You can get one for 15, 20 bucks. Probably less. I don't know if it'll take you wireless because you know it doesn't have. The Bluetooth is very specific, like you can't do audio, but uh, USB mice work for this game. Opening fire with launch. Okay. Automatic retry. That'll be useful. Getting pretty close to the co completing the construction of our tag game. Let's refresh. No, I don't want to refresh. This time we're going to make it a bit easier to play. You could say we're adding quality of life upgrade. Now, if the tagger or the runner breaks, the player needs to press retry button themselves to play again. Seems like a lot of hard work when you're supposed to be having fun, don't you think? make life easier, how about we add an automatic retry to the game? If the tagger or runner breaks, a retry will be triggered. Okay, yeah, USB wireless dongle, that will work the same. First, we need to call a nodon that watches out for things breaking, namely the object break nodon. Something you like to ask me? Don't be shy. That's right. If the tagger or runner breaks, we'd like you to let us know about it. We'll take care of it. Don't we worry about a thing. If that's what you're looking for, why don't you open up the settings screen to take a look at my check what settings. Oh, okay. That's a lot of things here. The screen is where you can set which breaks object to watch out for. Disable box cylinder and sphere. Enable person. I'm all set now. I'll keep a lookout for a person breaking. If that happens, I'll be sure to let you know about it. <laughs> Sounds like Hubert. Yeah. <laughs> We'll need another node on, one that makes an automatic retry happen. The retry node on. It's like an old man node on. If only I had my time to do it over again. Hey, old timer, what's up? It was only yesterday, but backside was itchy, and I thought it was on my own, so I gave it a good scratch. When I turned around, all the other Nodon were there looking at me. I wish I had a do-over for that. Now the game will restart every time a character is destroyed. I jumped over him. Oh, that was instant. Is there a way to put a delay in there? That would be nice. Yeah. Let's slow it down a bit. Delete the connection. 
Here's where we have a timer going on. Just this. I hope you're not wasting my time. We wouldn't dream of it. We just need some of your programming expertise. Well, why didn't you just say so? I'll help, but it causes me no shortage of headaches when people don't make appointments. I want to help up, but what if I have been double booked? Hardly tick. I'm like, I'm supposed to be talking, can I? It always pays to have one schedule in order. I'm um, sorry. As long as we're all in the same time zone. Let's move on. So. Then connect to this. Now we have a longer interval. So I guess it's a one second delay. Yep, one second delay. So, step six is complete. The next step will be the final one and our game attack will be complete. And the final step will show you how to add some laugher magic to your game. Don't, I don't like that term. That's, that's not a term I don't like. Feel excitement in the air. This will be the last step. And our game will be complete. But first, let's recap everything we've done so far. We fixed it so the runner controls with the R, likewise Tigers control with L. We made it so the game's over when a ball hits either player. It's fair to say we've got pretty much everything we need for an awesome game of tag. The final touch is still lacking, and that's a sprinkling of color from your very own hand. So next. We'll harness the inspiration and creativity to change color of the level. You ready? Here's where you can change up the color of the object. At this moment it's just brown. But how about making it black? You change the middle platform to black. Now what I'd like you to do is change the colors so the other platforms, whatever you like, express yourself. Let the hues flow out of you. Change the color of every single object snowed on to whatever you like. And start thinking about how you'd like to paint the town in shades of laughter. To make things easier, I'll make it so that you can move the program screens view around. And you can use this button to undo your last action. When your creative endeavors are complete, let me know. Just press done when you have everything you want. Ready, steady, start programming. It won't let me change anything else, huh? Just... already for the other ball. See, I want to highlight multiple objects and change one setting and have it affect all of them like a real GUI would let me do.
All right, I I have three more I need to switch. Oop, that was picked a person. I did want to pick a person. a few things. I want this purple. And I want these slants to be orange or orange as well. mouse apparently isn't very good because I'm doing a lot of clicks that aren't registering. What are you building? This this is the first tutorial. It's a game of tag. I basically finished finished the levels and it just last up was it had me color it to whatever I wanted to color it. Will it let me change the time or that? Yeah, that's been locked out on me. All right, so I guess I'm done. So I w w wanted to increase the timer to maybe five seconds. Or this is the f uh, it's actually not the first Switch game to use a mouse. I've played one before. It, it feels like um, the mouse for a PC. So like to go from here to from edge to edge, I'm only moving it maybe two inches. So it's, it's, it's reasonable. And if I do the same thing on my computer, it's actually, it's actually a little slower on my main PC. I have to do about four inches to do the same movement. So it's not bad. It's, uh, it's, it's comfortable, it's reasonable. Okay, with that I can declare the development of this game is complete. What a magnificent game it is. I feel like a spoiler sport interrupting this momentous occasion, but if you could head back to the program screen for a moment. For a first game it's great, and right on schedule too. We'll just look at you go. This is highly unnecessary. <laughs> um, well, the Super Nintendo mouse uses different technology. It's actually, I think, a trackball. I don't think it uses laser, but really, USB mouse, you know, is probably cheaper and easier to find than the Super Nintendo mouse. I don't think it would, be, would really be worth it to get that to work with the Switch. We've got the makings of a genius programmer in you, there's no doubt about it. Now all that remains is to have a game of tag taste place of pride in the games list. Back to the menu. I, yeah, this is, I'm just using an old USB mouse I had lying around 
I don't know how old it is, but you know, USB mice are pretty universal. I can't all my pro. <laughs> oh, if you you want your programs to throw a party when it's done? <laughs> Congratulations on going gold with Tag Showdown. When a game is finally finished, we say it's gone gold. It really gives you that feeling of accomplishment and completion. Going gold for the first time is a momentous occasion. Let's keep it for posterity, posterity by adding your game to the game, my games list. So going gold doesn't mean as much anymore if you can have day zero patches. So this is the game you made. Now you'll be able to go back and play it anytime you want. Oh, I guess you're probably a little curious about this place. Well, this is the free programming modes, my games list. Simply put, this is where we'll store the games that you build from scratch. Just as the name free programming suggests. When you press this button, you'll start programming from the ground up. You'll start with an empty environment. Of course, you've just gotten started with your programming journey. So don't worry. It's Sometimes things don't turn out exactly the way you imagine. It's a day to remember your very first game. Why not ramp up the fun by letting friends play the game you made? When you've had your fill of playing that, let's get back to on track with lesson two of the interactive lessons. See you next lesson. I want to try something. So if someone put a game code earlier. Let me find it. Alright, let me see if I can load that. I'm curious. When you receive games from online, you'll need to enter the game ID or programmer ID of the person who shared it. Just in case, if you receive a game that seems inappropriate in some way, you can report it with the report button. Bye for now. Mr. Tiffles. I don't remember how much this game costs. Let me double check. I'm going to have to load it in a different browser where I'm not logged in. Yes, this game is $30. It depends on how, well, whatever you're comfortable with. If, if, if it's a wireless mouse, if it's connecting by a USB dongle, doesn't matter. Um, if it's um, you know, otherwise, you know, a wired USB mouse would work the same. So it's just it, well, it tax, yeah, tax depends on where you live. The taxes are higher on my, where I live. It's like it's almost ten percent, so it costs me like thirty-two ninety. All right, and uh, some other codes got thrown into the chat. I'll try those in a bit. Wow, that uses four hundred and forty-three node on almost all, almost maxing them out with uh, using about half of the possible connections. This is taking a lot longer to download than I thought it would. Doom Eternal Garage Teaser. Okay. 
Okay, I suck. What? Oh, ZR is shoot. And I just back into a one of the things. I haven't hit one yet. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take long. Um, okay, let's... Uh... Wow. Whoa. I'm confused. Check out some of these other codes that you guys gave me. G seven K three L eight F six. First person demo. Okay, so that's just, I'm, I'm destructible. I have a jump. I, I'm stuck on a ladder. Don't know how to get up. There I go up. Thanks for playing. Subscribe to Blue Duck Gaming. Sincerely, Person420. Uh, okay, well, that was quick. Oh, 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 there's other signs. B to jump. R stick to look around. L to move around. Jump on enemy head to poof them away with magic. Well, I'm the one getting poofed. This part's a little buggy when you're touching the ladder. Jump. Okay, let's try the next code. Was that other game you had that used the noise? What are you talking about? First-person adventure from Beans. I'm not sure what you're asking, Mecca. Okay. 
Uh, thanks for the codes, uh, LPD. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try the other ones more, uh, shortly. Okay, so this is... I don't know if this is from the same guy or... Okay, that is... Ouch. I can't even make that first jump. Magipus? Oh! I guess game ends. Okay, fine. I don't want to play you anymore anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. What was the other game that used a mouse? Um, it was a weird one. Um, I don't remember. I'll see if I can look it up. Um, it was a game where, like... It simulated like 90s internet and I was like someone who patrolled it reported on misdeeds and it used the mouse and the keyboard. I don't remember what the name of it was. I, there's a video on it in uh, somewhere. Uh, I think it was I did it last year. Okay, cool. This is a cool little tank battle game. G O O eight H K H R H six. Moose scarf. I don't remember what the website is, but uh, Andre or Game Explained mentioned multiple times that that there's a website that someone created where you can, you know, submit your codes, search for other hyperspace something. Yeah, that's it. I thought. Hypno Space Outlaw. That's what it was. Hypno Space Outlaw. UFO Duel. Okay, so this is meant to be two players. L and R shoots. I can push and hold and it just spams. Oh, that blows up the whole thing. Okay, I, I guess I'm not allowed to go in the middle. Can I go not go here as well? Oh, that... What? Why did that blow up? Oh! My own bullets are fatal to me. Okay, I guess the game doesn't recognize whose bullets are whose. So he, it's a little friendly fire. And there is some ricochet going on. Okay, that's cool. A 3D platformer. X, V, M, D, 6, R, Lethal Lava Land? I don't like the sound of that. Yep, yeah, it uses mouse and keyboard on Switch. It's definitely easier than trying to use it with the joystick controls. Okay, jump. 
A and B both jump. Don't know what that does. Well, I can move up and down. Oh, it's a teleporter box. Okay, the void needs to be smaller. That's kind of annoying. didn't want to quit. I wanted to try one more time. Alright, I need to start changing my cameras around. Because I don't like trying to jump into or away from the screen. It just doesn't work. That's why I couldn't play Crash. Okay, I'm done with this. Uh, yes, I did see Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, and I I already pre-ordered a physical. I'll probably like. I'll probably double dip, you know, play a digital version, but get, have the physical version just to have the extra goodies. And, you know, for anyone who doesn't know what DDLC, Doki Doki Literature Club or DDLC is, not a kid's game. It looks cute and innocent. It is not. So, <laughs> warning. Yeah, Mario Maker 2 uh, with a mouse, at least a mouse, would also benefit. All right, I think... Oh, Person420, you're in this chat. Oh, I didn't re realize it. Thank you. Um, well, I think I'll, I'll try that last code you gave me, and then I'll probably call on a night. Wario commits tax fraud. <laughs> yeah, my daughter doesn't like that kid hanging around either. She did not like the game. My son and I like the game. Press A to commit tax fraud. <laughs> Is it? Was that it, or did I miss something? I think that's it. <laughs> Okay, person two four two zero says that's it. That that that, that is funny. Did, did you play Turnip Boy, or is, did you get tax fraud from a different uh, different idea? Yeah, Mecca. I was thinking the same thing. They must have found some other way to to have to have a different MacGuffin.
Right. Um, I made another game player. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I, I came across. Yeah, okay. Uh, here. I have a lot of stuff analysis guide now. I don't think I want to deal with all those. Right? Yeah, oh, I wanted to cancel. See, that's the problem with having playing PlayStation and, and Xbox is the accept and cancel buttons are backwards. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll try that last code and then, then I'm going to call it a night. It's almost midnight my time. Yeah, I saw one streamer. Um, not going to say who, what her name was, but she she played DDLC literally blind. She did not know this game. She played with three other streamers. They, at least one of them, did know the game. So he saw the first twist coming. When it happened, this girl literally just choked up she like stopped she froze for about 10 minutes and then they had to end up stop playing the game and had to like literally watch kitten videos on youtube to get her to get happy again <laughs> this doki doki literature club you know it was just announced uh, it was gonna be it's gonna be a console version coming out on Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch in addition to PC uh, on June 30. Warrior drinks milk and dies. <laughs> is that is that it? <laughs> it's just a cylinder object that's destruct that's can can destruct and the player object that's destructible and boom. <laughs> that's it. Alright, yeah, so I guess yeah I haven't yeah, obviously I haven't done any of the tutorials beyond the first one, so I'm sure they'll teach you teach more about camera movement in addition to room placement i'll get to those i'm not going to stream everything i do here i want to I'll, I'll do the other lessons on my own did she actually do that on stream which which part actually actually frees up for like 10 minutes and yeah she and these are all vtubers so literally, so she, her model did not move for 10 minutes. And then till, and, and when she finally started talking again, then they had to switch to cat and puppy videos, you know, on stream. Like, it was kind of sad. Well, yeah, but this, it's, it's not just the original game on console. It's, it's it has additional content. Right, so here's where I'm going to stop for the night. Oh, let me look and see what you did here. Okay, there's music. I guess I haven't, I haven't figured out music yet. You get the person. It is destructible. Oh, I'm not able to change things? I'm not able to edit? I thought I could edit someone else's work maybe not hi fire daily and arg thanks for thanks for watching i'm just about to wrap things up i was just uh, watch, looking to see what he, this this what person 420 did yeah he created the cylinder that's destructive and the player's destructible and then the cr creates 
Wario drinks milk and dies. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you missed, you know, this video is almost two hours long. So, or not, if you ended up missing the first half, go ahead and come back and watch the VOD, and you'll see what I did. I basically, I didn't want to take a picture. I did the first lesson, which te or it walks me through programming tag showdown from scratch, and then people in the chat gave me codes, and I downloaded the other games and gave it a try. This one was definitely the most impressive, though I suck at it. I'm, I, I suck at shooters. Like, I tried playing Ratchet and Clank today, and I couldn't even get past the tutorial. Push R. I don't know what that is. Oh! That makes things a little easier. I still walk into stuff. Ah! I'll try one more time. out of the way. Okay, well, I might try this more <laughs> later. <laughs> that bootleg Doom theme. <laughs> okay, for those you know, 11 people on right now, thanks for watching. Or this might be more. You know, Restream doesn't count them, the viewers right all the time. But this is still more viewers than I normally get. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll... I'll Okay, quick. I'll do a quick wrap up of what we're gonna do for E3. E3 starts tomorrow. We will be doing Ubisoft. We'll do a live reaction to Ubisoft. Let me bring up my notes so so I know what I'm talking at. Oh, that's not my notes. That's the wrong document. Let's try this again. And that's still the wrong document. I need last week's notes. <laughs> I'm good here. Okay, we'll be doing live live re live reactions to Ubisoft Forward at, at three o'clock Eastern. Devolver Digital at four thirty. Tomorrow, Sunday, we have Xbox and Bethesda at 1 p.m. Square Enix at 3:15. Monday, we are doing. I am doing in a, a live reaction to Intel, Intellivision and Miko News at 12:45. Limited Run Games at 4. Capcom Showcase at 5:30, and then Nintendo Direct Tuesday at noon. Again, all those times are Eastern. So, so we will have. We will be live streaming reactions. All weekend. <laughs> so I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.